I'm a prospector looking for some rare earth metals. All right, back on Jack Stands yet again. It's the Subaru Impreza. Today we have something kind of interesting because I haven't been able to get this piece until now. It's been about two months. Here it is. It'll be a surprise. All right, well, this is not gonna be a unboxing video. I do wanna show this piece of pipe that just came out of the box. This is a nameless 2012 to 2016 Impreza front pipe or 2013 to 2017 Crosstrek front pipe. So this is a mandrel bent stainless steel. I think it's 304 stainless steel, two and a quarter inch pipe diameter. So this part of the pipe here is a quarter inch in diameter larger than the OEM one, right? So this is where you're gonna get that a little bit of exhaust flow de-restriction, so less restriction in this part here. And we're gonna be replacing our cat, which the original one is now clogged. But supposedly this one is a high flow 200 cell count catalytic converter. It should provide more breathing compared to the OEM one. I originally thought that in the entire exhaust stream, if you're not gonna replace the headers, then this part right here, what I just mentioned, these two pieces are gonna be the highest restriction in the entire exhaust, I think. So this should, I think should give me a couple of horsepower, maybe some, some feelings of torque. Just for giggles, we're gonna hear what the sound of an exhaust sounds like without the resonator and the tailpipe. So let's try this. actually sounds really 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 throaty it sounded pretty good too right it didn't sound that bad without the exhaust so all right both of them are on the table here oem front pipe is this one here and here's the nameless one looking at the pipe diameter you know they say that it's two and a quarter of course it's gonna be two and a quarter but you can tell between here and here, this one is a lot thinner, but the um, the heat shielding, the OEM heat shielding, makes it appear that it's almost as big. This is the OEM secondary cat. This is the aftermarket 200 cell count cat. Supposedly one of the benefits of going with this front pipe is to have more clearance under. A lot of cross track owners, you know you guys, you're all like, I'm gonna go off road, right? I guess it's good, you guys have a high, high sitting exhaust, right? All right, so what is this? like a shin guard or something, right? But no, this is my old heat shield that is supposed, it's made by DEI. It came with the, the most important part is these standoffs for these wrap things, right? But they help stand off your, your, your clamps from the metal plate that you're using, right? So put it around here so that the, uh, that transmission doesn't get too hot. Okay, so we're gonna do a little experiment here we're going to take the front pipe that I previously mentioned that has a clogged cat here, and I'm gonna dump it towards this box here. Okay, well, not as much as I thought would come out, but, oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this. Sandy, they look like sparkles. What is that stuff? This is the, part of that catalytic converter, all of the rare earth metals. Some of it came out as dust when I took it off and this is like the heavier kind of stuff. It looks like salt grains almost, as big as salt grains. So you can imagine those getting clogged up inside of here, trying to blow through this hole. And if you can't, then what's gonna happen, right? You're gonna get that exhaust restriction. Ooh wee, Jimmy. You won't guess what I found. Some more of that rare earth metal. This was the second time I hit that catalytic converter. 
This time I used a little bit of clanging to get rid of that dust that might have hit the front there. This was the second go. So I think that's why a lot of people end up going with uh, catless front pipes because there's no O2 sensor that goes here or here, right? So anything past those first two O2 sensors is just passive, passive cleaning, right, of the exhaust. And it won't throw any codes if this, this thing's broken. So that's why it's gonna be a hard thing to diagnose unless you understand how the exhaust works and what are, what are those things that are in between to, to cause those restrictions, right? So I think you could get a good amount of power out of this little engine if you just had a straight pipe from the header back, right? Um, and you didn't have the secondary cat. But because, you know, we care about the environment to a degree and we don't want it to be too raspy or too noisy, we do put these, these cats in to, uh, to keep the sound down. I almost forgot. I got my, uh, my mics here and I'm gonna take a sound clip of what it sounds like an FE20B with no front pipe. See, this pipe here is not on the car anymore. We're gonna, I'm gonna put this underneath here. loud <laughs> all right guys that's it if you want a really loud exhaust just take out the rest of your exhaust just run straight manifold dump that's gonna be loud <laughs> wow i didn't think that this car had it in it but it sure does so all right that's the reason why we have exhaust pipes to quiet down a lot of this stuff <laughs> experiment <laughs> and find out I like being under the car, guys. It's super duper comfortable under here. It is not sunny, <laughs> it's quiet. It's so one really nice thing about uh, doing exhaust is you don't really have to do much. So literally these two bolts here that came with these kind of like spring, springy things, right? There's that donut that I just mentioned earlier. That's my exhaust shield. There's this hanger here. This is integral, okay? This helps you get it on there without the whole exhaust falling on your face. That's where the exhaust manifold is. And there's, I just put the gasket in. All right, here we go. So we're gonna mount up this front pipe here. First, I'm gonna put in this triangle flange. Remember when you were a kid and you had to put the, the things in the right shape? That's what that is there. Now, let's put that clip in. And look, that, that's nice, right? And then we're going to go to the back over here. And this should be pretty simple. Here we go. Simple. One. Go number two. Back in, hand tight. Go back to the front. So, flanged nuts. All right, and that's it. I think I'm going to just torque these down to hand tight. I'm not going to... I'm not even going to look up the torque spec, guys. Because typically this stuff doesn't need a lot of torque. It just needs to be sealed. All right, so this is the part where I feel like the new pipe is vibrating against things. If it sounds like I'm struggling, I am. It's getting stuck under the car <laughs> shoulders. This point here behind under heavy engine braking vibrates. This is connected directly to this transmission mount and to the transmission. And so all of the vibration that comes through this pipe is gonna, it gets thrown up into all of these components. And I can definitely feel it in the floor of the car. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to move this exhaust pipe over before I bolt it in. And then number two, I'm using a shim. This is a rubber bicycle tube here so that it can absorb a little bit of the vibration. I've got a little rubber bow tie propping up the uh, bracket here. And it's just gonna, provide a little bit of dampening. I think just, you know, won't send 100% of the vibration through, maybe 90% of it or something. Whoop! 
almost broke the glass on my screen. Okay, so that's what I set out to do. That boot there is gonna get melty if it gets too hot down here. This exhaust shield should help. I really just wanna cover this cat area because this is the part that's kind of restrictive, right? And this is where when the flow comes in here, it's gonna get slowed down here and it's gonna get hot. And this is gonna transfer right into this case here. So that's why I originally put this heat shield in. I think it actually might be fine just to put it right there. Okay, last thing to do here is just to tighten up these two spring bolts. All right, friends, so some notes about the exhaust. We uh, went out there with our new nameless two and a quarter inch front pipe. I did notice that the power that I have is finally back. Going back to the stock exhaust manifold with this aftermarket front pipe. There's a little gain. I think there's just a little gain. Why does it sound a little bit louder than normal? It's actually full. It should be fully enclosed. The cat is the only thing that's different other than this, this front pipe, right? These two pieces. And so it sounded louder and it sounded more bubbly. <laughs> like, you know, like that Subaru Boxer blah, 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 sound, right? But anyway, for the most part, the car's back to how it was. I'm really happy about that. And that mid-range that used to be really, really lacking is only kind of lacking. I've been living with it for the last like two months. And, and now finally the pipe is here, it's been replaced and the car's back to how it should be. So can't wait till it's like kind of cool. It was like hundred degrees like on my, my dash temp when I went out for this little test run. So I know the car is not performing as good as it can, can be. Cause typically these little FB engines love the cold weather. And when there's cold weather, um, the timing, it, it loosens the timing, right? And you get a little bit more of that, that torque. So, um, yeah, the car is back to normal. I'm kind of happy about it. It took forever for that front pipe to come here, but it's here now. And I think we can continue on tuning this car. I'm not in a slump anymore. So we'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you on the next one.